Today, I'm excited to finally share with you the results of my US visa journey in Poland. I will also talk about what it's like to be a Russian in a country that's often considered among the most Russophobic in the world. So join me for the ups and downs and the final reveal of my adventure. I'm already in my new hotel. This one is not as nice as the other one, but the location of this one is better. And my adventures of my time in Poland continues. Seriously, you can write a TV show script based on my time here. And this time I had problems with the hotel. So basically, when I was making a reservation last night, I specifically chose an option to pay online through the reservation website. I was using Agoda, it's like booking.com, but just different website. My card through my Russian website, where I normally make reservations, it didn't work in Poland. So I used my fiance's credit card again to pay online. And then I received a confirmation from the hotel. It said, please pay cash at the property. Don't use card because we have a problem with terminal. So I immediately called the hotel and I explained them my situation. And they said, okay, try to cancel it. But the booking is non cancelable, non refundable. There was not an option to cancel from my side. And they told me that they cannot send the confirmation request from their side because it's already too late. I couldn't call Agoda either because I don't have uh, international service and Wi-Fi calling doesn't work. So I was just on the phone with uh, the lady from the reception. She said she will try to contact uh, booking herself for them to cancel, but I guess she did, just didn't do that because this morning I didn't receive any confirmations from Agoda or Booking.com asking me the confirmation that I want to cancel this booking. And I don't mind paying cash, but the thing is, I brought only a certain amount of cash with me since my cards, there's no way that my cards would work anywhere in Europe. So I brought cash and I brought some amount to spend, like to live, and I also brought some for emergency. And since I made a mistake, I'm already uh, living on the emergency money, which is very dangerous because as soon as I run out, that's a good thing, at least I have a second passport. Uh, otherwise, that would be another huge problem because today I turned in my passport to the embassy and I have another second one, which the same passport, like in Russia, if you travel a lot, you can apply for the second passport. And I'm so glad I had it. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to check into the hotel. And when making a reservation, I didn't even think about that. And imagine if I didn't have a passport what would I do? And I already left the other hotel. My time in Poland is fun, but it's not that easy. I'm meeting challenges everywhere on my way. So I'm in my new hotel, at least everything is fine. And I'm right in the old town of Warsaw. So right now, all I'm gonna do is just go somewhere to a nice restaurant and eat and <laughs> just relax from all my problems. <laughs> This is pretty, the view, like little gingerbread houses. Everything is pretty. Well, except the Christmas trees. You know my relationships to Christmas trees already, right? I think I'm gonna eat some Polish cuisine today to have Jurek one more time. Famous Polish soup, so good. I went to a popular restaurant with Polish cuisine specifically to eat Jurek, a traditional Polish soup with a unique sour taste made by using fermented rye flour or sourdough starter. I've never tried anything similar to it. It's just so good. And then I had the famous Polish pierogi, which are dumplings with various fillings. It's not a new dish to me, we also have it in Russia, but these were really delicious. And the name of the restaurant is Zapichek. I totally pronounced it wrong, didn't I? So pretty. So full. It was so good though. I'm going on a gluten-free diet again after I come back from Poland. I didn't eat gluten for four months until I came to Poland. Well, actually until I came to France and then I ordered a French onion soup and it had full of bread in it. So then I was like, what's the point? And I started eating gluten again. Especially on my trip to Poland when everything is with bread or dough. So I'm just gonna continue eating bread while I'm in Poland and then as soon as I go back to Russia, no more gluten for me again. So 
so I decided to go back to my room I'm not really in the mood to walk around right now but I will come out later again for like a cup of hot chocolate or something so I will see you later I didn't leave my room that day because as soon as I got inside I fell asleep and slept until the next day sunny today my favorite day in Warsaw so far and also the warmest I was walking around town enjoying the sunny day and the surroundings so much until something happened and I urgently had to go somewhere Surprisingly, they stick it to my passport really fast, right on the next day after I brought them the missing piece of paper. And today I'm already going home. My flight is at 6 p.m. and I'm flying through Athens and then I have a stop in Yerevan and then back to Moscow. I will spend in Moscow a few days and then go back home to St. Petersburg. And when I go back to Russia, I will share how I was treated as a Russian in Poland and also how I was interacting with Ukrainians because I did, as you know, there's a lot of them living right now in Poland. So wait for that information. I cannot uh, share it right now because I already have to leave. And right now, uh, right before my flight, I'm planning to spend the rest of the time in the shopping mall and do some last minute shopping because in 10 days that I've been here, I still haven't done any shopping. And honestly, I'm so happy to leave today because I didn't like Warsaw at all. Um, even though I had such a great time here, I didn't like the city. And please don't be offended. I don't mean it in a bad way. I don't have to like every place I travel to, just like I don't like Moscow at all. I didn't like Warsaw as well. And But I did had amazing time here, amazing. Like these 10 days were feeling like a pure, super fun vacation despite a little bit of a stressful moments and i have to leave now i have a few requests from family of what to bring them i'm not gonna buy anything for myself so all this emergency money can go straight into shopping not all of course i'm still gonna keep some for travel emergency situations in case they happen it's also raining today so feels very gray and depressive also perfect time to leave so let's not waste any more time and let's go the light is fading fast from this old town we gotta go our bags are packed so what we It's been a long journey and after such trip it feels especially good to be back home and I'm finally wearing a different sweater <laughs> which feels even better. So what I wanted to tell you is how I was treated in Poland as a Russian girl because you know Poland is the most Russophobic country in the world and there's also a lot of Ukrainian people living there right now. So did I feel safe? How was everything? let me tell you <laughs> so at the beginning of my stay in warsaw i was with some ukrainians it's actually a family friends but i never met them before until i first saw them in warsaw and i also met their friends who were also ukrainian and we got along really really well 
I like them a lot, they liked me too. And the key here is that, is that they didn't treat me as a Russian. They treated me as me, as a person, as a human being, and they liked me. So here's the key. Sometimes when you meet people, you shouldn't judge them by their nationality. They judge me as my <laughs> personality. They liked me as me. Period. And then I was alone for some time until my Polish friend came from a different city. And to be honest with you, I wasn't really feeling very welcomed in Warsaw. I don't think people knew that I'm Russian. I could be Ukrainian, I could be Russian, I could be from anywhere, I could be from Serbia. But just in general, the vibe from Polish people were a little bit arrogant. I cannot say it was unfriendly, because they probably, I'm sure they didn't know where I was from, but even people on reception, like they saw my passport, they knew. I was scared that they would kick me out, but of course they didn't do that and they probably wouldn't do that. But I just felt a little bit of arrogancy. And my friend told me that that's not because they think you're Russian, it's because people in Warsaw are a little bit more arrogant than in the rest of Poland. But I think that's similar with Moscow. People in Moscow also feel that they are more special than in the rest of Russia. But I'm okay with that because I'm also from Russia and I don't expect people all the time to be extremely friendly to me. So that's another thing. Also, if you have been in Warsaw or in other cities in Poland, you know that there is some Ukrainian charity organization. It's people um, like walking with little box uh, asking for donations and they have different types of donations. Sometimes it's war, sometimes it's kids and maybe there's some other types of uh, donation. I only saw the two, uh, the kids and the war. Funding. A few times they approached me, also they approached me when I was with other Ukrainians and luckily it was asking for donation for kids. And once I was alone in one of my last days in Warsaw, I was walking in the old town and there was a young Ukrainian guy asking for charity. When he approached me I knew that he wants me to donate. I didn't know if it was war or it was for kids, but I knew he was Ukrainian and he was very friendly coming to me, starting to speak English first, uh, then Ukrainian, and then he was like, where are you from? And I'm like, doesn't matter, <laughs> because I know that he's from Ukraine, I'm from Russia, and that could be a very uncomfortable situation. So I just uh, smiled and kept going. He's like, wait, where are you from? Are you from Kiev? And I was like, no. Are you from Russia was like, yes, and smiled. And he was like, okay, wait. So I stopped, we started talking, we started to have a very nice conversation. He was asking me, what am I doing here? Am I here on vacation? I told him about uh, getting my US visa. And we just had a very small talk and very friendly conversation. I asked him, where is he from? And we just like had a very sweet and nice conversation. I was a little bit surprised because everybody I met from Ukraine and Poland were extremely friendly to me and I'm from Russia. But when I came to the restaurants in Poland and they were full of Ukrainians, I felt a little bit uncomfortable. I didn't speak to anyone. I was speaking English to waitresses, but I don't know. I still felt just a little bit uncomfortable. Although if we had a conversation, I would be extremely friendly. Why wouldn't I actually have only good feelings towards the Ukrainian people. Then I also had a situation in one of the restaurants. I was having breakfast and then a waiter uh, brings a cheesecake to me saying that this is a cheesecake from a table over there and there were two men sitting and they waved at me. When I was leaving I like said thank you so much, uh, that was very sweet. One of them was like where are you from? And I was like can you guess? He's like I don't want to guess please tell me. I was like okay I'm from Russia. Do you already regret your decision? And he smiled and started speaking pure Russian to me with a Polish accent of course but he said that he's been to Russia before, he uh, speaks Russian, he learns Russian and also that was very nice and sweet. <laughs> and the last story I want to share with you happened at the airport when I was leaving Warsaw. I came to the airport very early as I always do and I was uh, already in line to the registration and the check-in hasn't even started yet and there was only a few people lining up 
and one one woman came to me and she was very scared and nervous and she started talking to me with a mix of russian and ukrainian and uh, like she just was very scared and didn't know where to check in what to do she said it's her second flight in her entire life and she's really nervous and she needed some help and she asked me where i'm flying i said that i'm flying to athens to Armenia through Athens. She said, I'm flying to Athens too. I think we're in the same plane. Uh, can you tell me where to go? Like, she wasn't afraid of flying. She was just afraid of all this uh, connecting flights, looking for gates and stuff. I was like, don't worry, I'll help you out. I'll be with you. And I saw that she was holding a Ukrainian passport. And then she was like, so you're flying to Armenia. Are you from Armenia? I was like, no, I'm from Russia. <laughs> And she's like, I'm from Ukraine. And we smiled to each other and it was instant bond. And she was so sweet and I was so sweet to her too. And we were just together this entire time, the entire flight. And then I helped her out in Athens, looking for her, finding her gate. And then we hugged each other and kissed each other at the end. So that's how my interactions with Ukrainians in Poland was. Everything was very sweet and nice and even in general, other than my little emergency situations, I didn't have any any bad occasions interacting with people. I wasn't alone most of the time, but when I was, I had no special cases and nothing even closer to people treating me bad because I'm Russian. Funny thing I want to tell you though, since Poland really hates Russia so much, uh, they start to rename some of the Russian names to Ukrainian names. For example, borscht is now called only Ukrainian everywhere, which is fine. Like borscht is such a dish that is equal to Russia and Ukrainian. Like if we say borscht is Russian, it's 100% correct. If Ukrainians say that borscht is Ukrainian, it's also 100% correct because this is the dish that we both have in our culture and we equally have all the rights to it. But then there is a drink, Moscow Mule. It was always called Moscow Mule, but now I saw in one of the restaurants it was called Kiev Mule. There was never such drink, but if they want to rename it like that, it's okay. I just thought that it was funny and I wanted to share that with you. And also I've been told that, you know, uh, there is pierogi in Poland and there is uh, one type called ruski pierogi. It's a dumpling with potato and cottage cheese filling inside. By the way, in Russia you cannot find such a filling inside. I tried it, I liked it. It tastes fine, it tastes great actually and nobody knows why it's called ruski pierogi but it is what it is. And I also have been told that in some places they rename ruski pierogi to Ukrainian pierogi. So overall I felt safe in Poland. People treated me fine. I didn't have a Russian flag written on me anywhere. But still, overall, I felt a little bit uncomfortable being in Poland right now. And I think that right now, if Russians want to travel to Poland for vacation, probably they should avoid it. They are not welcome there. Uh, Polish people really hate us even before the war and even more right now. So there's no really need to travel to Poland during this time. Although Paulina was telling me about um, Gdansk, Gdynia and uh, I forgot another one where they have the beach and she showed me pictures. So now I really want to travel there, but during the summertime. But I'm not going to go to Poland this summer, but sometimes in the future I have it in my bucket list right now. And that is it. Finally, <laughs> this trilogy of my adventures in Poland is over. Next video will be from Paris, of my two days in Paris. And then, while you're watching these videos, I'm already in Surgut right now, in my hometown in Siberia. If you have any video requests, please write them down below and I will film anything you want, pretty much. So thank you for watching, guys. I hope you like those videos. I hope you find them entertaining or helpful in some way. And I will see you in Surgut. Bye, guys.